In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Lennox Elite 18 XPV and the Ream RP 16 AZ. Now, these are both inverter-driven heat pumps. That's why we're converting them. I have both the data for both these particular systems pulled up on my screen. We're going to be going through their efficiency ratings. We're going to be talking about which systems qualify for the heat pump tax credits that are available, as well as which systems would work best for your specific situation and which climates these systems wouldn't work well in. So if you're in the market for HVAC system replacement in either of these two systems, or systems you are considering, you've come to the right place because we're going to do a deep dive on what the differences are between these two systems so you can make an informed decision. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't smash it so hard that you break your phone. A commenter posted that. I thought that was funny. So, but obviously you could tap the like button for the algorithm. That's fine too. Either way, it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and your support is much appreciated. So if you smash the like button or consider subscribing, if you get value from this content, it is much appreciated. So that being said, let's dive in and get started just taking a look at this Lennox Elite Series 18 XPV. Now, the reason we're talking about these two systems being the RP16AZ as well as the Elite 18 XPV is both these systems are inverter driven and they're both variable speed systems, which means they have a variable speed compressor. And what that translates to is basically two things from a comfort perspective. If you're new to the world of HVAC and you're kind of tuning in for the first time, basically both these systems ramp up and down along a continuum. They're variable speed compressors, which means when you compare these to a single stage system that's either on or off, kind of like how a light switch works, the process of getting a variable speed system basically accomplishes two things. Number one, both these systems are going to be quieter than a single stage system. And number two is both of these systems are going to be more efficient because as you can imagine, coming on either at 100% capacity or 0% capacity leaves no wiggle room in terms of what if it's not the hottest part of the day and you don't really need to be on at 100% capacity capacity because even in the heat of summer at 10 a.m. your system's not going to be working as hard as it is at 4 p.m. from a cooling perspective and the same thing is true for a heat pump on the coldest day of the year that normally it's coldest at night and so your system's going to be working harder at night than it is in the heat of the day of the winter when the sun's out and things like that your heat pump's not having to work as hard and it's going to be a little bit warmer out typically so the benefit of having these variable speed systems is number one they're more efficient number two they're quieter and kind of a third or added benefit is that because these systems ramp up and down along a continuum and have a variable capacity, that typically will lead to longer run times, which means that they circulate more air in your home. And as a result, you tend to have less hot spots and cold spots throughout your home. So if comfort is really important to you, we always recommend people go with an inverter product, whether it's either of these two products or any of the other products that are out there on the market. Inverters will help you maximize comfort, provided that they are sized appropriately and installed correctly. Anytime we have any sort of issue issues with any sort of system. Nine times out of 10, it comes down to something that was missed on the installation. Occasionally, there's random issues for every single manufacturer has had recalls or defects at some point in the manufacturing process because they manufacture thousands and thousands of these units. So that's bound to happen to some extent. But for the most part, if you're using a reputable brand, you're going to have less problems than if you're using just like a no name brand. Although a lot of the stuff is private labeled. So that statement is not entirely true depending on which brand you're buying. But bottom line is we try to recommend when it comes to brands or the different manufacturers big thing is just sticking with a name brand that you recognize and or that's been around for a while so you know that they're going to honor that warranty if something does pop up that's unexpected but just to dive into some of the efficiency ratings here this system is up to 21.6 on the sear 2 rating and up to 8.7 on the hspf2 rating and it's also listed as energy star qualified there are some caveats to that and that this system is only energy star qualified on certain tonnages and so i'll point that out in a second and when we look at the RP16AZ, this is also an inverter driven system. But as you can see, the SEER rating is a little bit lower where it's 17 on the SEER2 rating. The EER2 rating is 10.4. We didn't actually find out what it was on the Lennox because they did not advertise that. And then the heating efficiencies or the HSPF2 rating is 8.1. So overall, the Lennox looks to be a little bit more efficient than this system. And But as you can see, they're both kind of in some of the other things when it comes to brand. And one of the biggest things that we really tell people to look at or compare, and this is just my opinion. Some people agree with me. Some people give me a lot of hate in the comments for it, but between the different brands, the biggest difference in my opinion really comes down to warranty. I've seen all the brands have issues with their technology from time to time, like I said, or have a recall or have some sort of warranty issue. Even the big reputable name brands like Train, Carrier, Lennox, Daikin, you name it. Like they've had problems with their products before. So as long as they have the good warranty, then you're going to be covered if something 
does happen in terms of a manufacturing defect. But both of these systems have a 10 year warranty on both the compressor. It looks like Ream has a 10 year conditional unit replacement guarantee. I'm not sure if that's the same as Daikin's because Daikin is actually has a 12 year unit guarantee on some of their products, which means that if the compressor goes bad, they'll actually give you a brand new unit. And that's what it looks like on this. So that's nice that they really stand behind their product like that. And as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, this is inverter driven, it's variable speed. This is one of their entry level systems. It looks like the cooling capacities are ramped up in stages. So it might not be a true inverter in the sense of that ramps up from 10 to 20% because it says between 45 and 70% of capacity is kind of where it modulates and it can ramp up to 100% when required. But the bottom line is this looks like a pretty efficient system. The warranties are kind of neck and neck. Obviously the Lennox system is a little bit more efficient. But one thing I did notice that I kind of want to point out and we'll touch on it here. When you go to, this is the Energy Star site. I'll make sure to link this in the description for your convenience. But Energy Star is where you can look up. If you click here and choose a brand that you're looking at, you can literally pick really any no-name manufacturers that you've never heard of and they will pop up here with the models and of the specific units that qualify for any of the tax credits that are out there. So if you are looking at the Classic Plus series, which this particular unit is in the Classic Plus series. However, one thing about this particular model is that it does not actually qualify from what I can see for any of the tax credits that are available. And I'll kind of touch on why I have its performance data picked up or pulled up here so you can kind of see the difference. It looks like gibberish at a glance, but I promise when I break it down, it'll all make sense. But when we look at the Linux series or the Linux system, we can see that 18 XPV series does qualify, but it's limited to the two ton system. Now, if you're curious and want to see which specific sizes of either of these models qualify for, the 18 XPV only qualifies in a two ton version. So if you need a five ton system and you're trying to take advantage of a tax credit, this system won't be for you, whether you're in the North or the South. These tax credits also vary by region. So if you look at here where it says tax credit eligible, in order for something to qualify in the North or in one of the colder states, it actually has to have a little cold climate designation next to it. So if you look at, for example, this Ream Prestige series, it says cold climate right here. When you go click on this tax credit eligible, but it will take you to this page where it pulls up the differences between the systems and what's required to qualify for this $2,000 heat pump tax credit. So in the South, they're geared towards cooling. In the North, these states are obviously more geared towards heating in terms of the rebates that are available. And so in order for a system to qualify in the North, it has to be designated as a cold climate heat pump. And then in the South, it just has to have an energy star rating and qualify for that designation based on its efficiency. Now, when, if you want to look up specific models and see what qualifies, you can click this explore models button right here, and it will take you to this page, which I've pulled up for Reams models. And what I noticed was that it basically jumps from the RP18AZ to the RP15AZ, which if I'm not mistaken, is a single or a two stage heat pump. And so this RP16AZ does not actually qualify for any rebates. Now in Reams defense, this is not uncommon for a lot of inverters. Inverters tend to have higher EER ratings, even though this system, if you compare this with the RP15AZ, it would probably save money by comparison in terms of its operating efficiency because it's an inverter, but inverters, they tend not to get as good of EER ratings. Some of the manufacturers, in order to hit some of the tax credits and Energy Star ratings and things, they've kind of adjusted their technology to try and focus on EER ratings as well as SEER because for a system to have a nine EER rating, but then have a 17 SEER rating doesn't really make sense because SEER is how a system is performing in peak operation, right? When it's running at throughout the year, basically what its maximum efficiency is going to be. That's what SEER is a reflection of is how it's running kind of throughout the year. Whereas EER is just a snapshot of that particular system running at 100% capacity, which inverters don't really run at 100% capacity that often because they're not that efficient at 100% capacity. And that's not how they make their efficiency. They make up that efficiency by running along a continuum and running at a variable capacity by contrast to some of these other systems. So the RP16AC system does not qualify, but you're still getting a pretty efficient system by comparison. And as I mentioned here, this is the RP15AZ system. So as you can see, this is a little bit different. This system qualifies, but like I mentioned, I believe this is only a single stage or a two stage system. And this RP15AZ system that does qualify, even though it's a little bit less efficient, the reason it's qualifying, you can see the SEER2 rating is a little bit lower. The EER2 rating is higher. The HSPF2 rating is a little bit lower as well. But this is just a basic, if we, let's see, 
see, what is this? Is this a, yeah, and so as you can see, this system is a, as I kind of guessed, it's a two-stage system. So it's a stage system versus an inverter system, and so that's why it's able to maintain that higher efficiency rating on the EER side in order to get the rebates is my hunch in terms of why that system qualifies for the heat pump tax credit. Now, there's something else to kind of consider between these two systems. Both of the, going back to the original system we were comparing, I just went kind of down that rabbit hole to show you the difference between why some of these systems might not qualify. There's not really a big difference there in terms of tax credits. The Linux system only qualifies for the two ton. Uh, the RP16AZ doesn't qualify at all for any tonnages. So that's not really a factor unless you happen to be looking for a two ton system. Both these systems are going to be able to pair with an air handler or an evaporator coil that has an electronic expansion valve. So they are both communicating systems. So that's one of the benefits of either of these systems. And just to kind of give you a further deep dive into low ambient performance for the purpose of understanding cold climate heat pumps, as well as this also translates into how these systems perform in high ambient temperatures. I'm going to dive into the chart to show you how the system actually performs. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the algorithm. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, and you've gotten some value from this content. But what we're looking at here is basically how this uh, RP, this is for the Ream product, how this RP16AZ system performs in colder temperatures. Now, this is the two ton, three ton, four ton, and five ton version. That's what each of these lines are. That's what the difference is. And this 47 degree heating capacity in BTU per hour, what that means is that exactly what it says, right? What its operating capacity is at 47 degrees outdoor ambient air temperature. So when it's 47 degrees outside, this two ton system runs with a heating capacity of 22,800 BTUs. I spell out what that means in English. 24,000 BTUs is what a two ton system does in terms of heating or cooling. So one ton is just 12,000 BTUs, whether that's heating or cooling. That's how a BTU converts to tons in terms of when we use the term tons of cooling or tons of heating. And then when you see this three ton system, it operates at 34,500 BTUs. Well, my hunch as to why this system doesn't qualify for the tax credit is pretty easy to spell out based on its capacity at 17 degrees. Because let me explain what is required to qualify for the tax credit in these northern blue climates. So if you live in any of these states, your heat pump needs to do two things in order to qualify. Number one is it needs to maintain 70% capacity of its rated capacity at 47 degrees. It needs to maintain that capacity to 70% all the way down to five degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's number one. Number two is that system needs to maintain a COP or coefficient of performance of at least 1.75 down to that five degrees Fahrenheit as well. And when we look at the system, you can see that at 17 degrees, it does maintain a COP of 2.4, basically across the board from all the tonnages. And what that means or what COP is, it stands for coefficient of performance. And it basically, this in this instance, a COP of 2.4 means that for one watt of electricity used by the heat pump, that heat pump is able to produce produce 2.4 watts of heat energy. So it's a reflection of how much electricity has to be used to produce a certain amount of heat. And it's just watts to watts is the formula. So 2.4 means that system is 2.4 times more efficient than your electric space heater or electric resistive heat source, by example, just to kind of give you a layman's terms breakdown. But one of the things that I'm noticing is that as you can see, the capacity here is 23,000 BTUs at 47 degrees Fahrenheit or 22,000 800 and it's 13,800 at 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not even at five degrees. They don't have that on this chart. And you can already see that the system is already derating past that 70% mark. And that's true for basically all of these models. You can see this five ton system derates from five tons or 57,000 BTUs, which is technically like five and three quarters tons of heating down to 35,500, which is just under three tons of heating. Three tons would be an even 36,000 BTUs. So this system is derating pretty substantially in terms of its capacity capacity loss. And that explains why it doesn't qualify for the heat pump tax credit, those cold climates. But the bottom line is I'm going to make sure to link all this in the description. So if you want to go in here and click explore models and peruse which systems do qualify, you can. I really like this tool. I've found it to be very helpful when doing head to head comparisons between the different systems, but you don't have to do that. Whatever contractor you're working with, they're not going to know every model and every system for every manufacturer. But like if you're talking to a ream dealer, they're going to know which systems qualify. If you're you're talking to a Daikin dealer, the contractor should know which Daikin systems qualify. So we hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please smash that like button for the algorithm. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to 
to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas, I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter-driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or infrared radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors, so click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC Dope Show contractor in your area. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now about heat pump efficiency ratings as well as some videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode.